Hello, welcome to Modeling with Data in the Tidyverse. In this course, you'll leverage the data wrangling and visualization toolbox you developed in previous courses to learn about modeling. The ideas behind modeling are crucial to many fields, including statistics, causal inference, machine learning, and artificial intelligence. You'll start by equipping yourself with some theory and terminology related to modeling. In chapters two and three, you'll learn one of the most widely used techniques for modeling, linear regression. You'll end by assessing the quality of models. For example, how well does a model fit given data or how good are a model's predictions? Let's start with the general modeling framework as expressed by the following formula, where you have y, an outcome variable, the phenomenon you wish to model, x, a set of explanatory or predictor variables used to inform your model. The arrow on the x indicates that x can be a vector, in other words, a series of values. f, a mathematical function making explicit the relationship between y and x. f of x is also called the signal. And finally, epsilon, an unsystematic error component. Epsilon is also called the noise. Let's first focus only on y and x and revisit f and epsilon later. Previously, I called x both explanatory and predictor variables. Which term you use when depends roughly on which modeling scenario you're addressing. If you want to explain what factors are associated with or cause the outcome variable, you are modeling for explanation, and thus, x are explanatory variables. If you want to make predictions of the outcome variable, you are modeling for prediction, and thus, x are predictor variables. Let's start with an example of modeling for explanation. At the end of academic terms at many universities and colleges, instructors are given teaching evaluation scores by students. A study conducted at the University of Texas Austin investigated whether differences in scores could be explained by differences in instructor attributes. The outcome variable is average teaching score for different courses. Explanatory variables include rank, gender, which at the time of this study was recorded as a binary variable, male or female, age, and even the instructor's beauty score, BTY average. We'll talk more about that later. The evals data frame included in the Modern Dive package contains this data. The Modern Dive package is used in moderndive.com, an open source written and published electronic textbook on statistical and data sciences that Chester Ismay of DataCamp and I have co-authored. This package includes other data and functions you'll be using in this course. Let's preview the data using the glimpse function from the dplyr package. Observe that there are 463 instructors and 13 variables in this data frame. A crucial first step is an exploratory data analysis, or EDA. EDA gives you a sense of your data and it can help inform model construction. There are three basic steps to an EDA. Most fundamentally, looking at the data via a spreadsheet viewer or using Glimpse as I did earlier. Creating visualizations, computing summary statistics. Let's do this for the outcome variable score. Since score is numerical, let's construct a histogram to visualize its distribution by using a geom histogram from the ggplot2 package where the x aesthetic is mapped to score. Let's also set a bin width of 0.25. Observe, the largest score is five and most scores are between about three and five. But what's the average? Let's perform the third step in our EDA computing summary statistics. Summary statistics summarize many values with a single value called a statistic. Let's compute three such summary statistics using the summarize function. The mean, 
or average, score is 4.17, whereas the median of 4.3 indicates about half the instructors had scores below 4.3 and about half above. The standard deviation, a measure of spread and variation, is 0.544. In our first exercise, you'll be performing an EDA on a different numerical variable, this time instructor age.